so I'm thinking about forge welded twists such as this little basket twist. This is a classic forge welded twist. Most of you have probably seen this done but we'll take a quick look at that today and then maybe we'll do a few more in some upcoming videos just to see some different twists. By the way I'm still working on the big drift for the Pulaski and we'll get back to it once I get the drift done and then we can really just finish the project. Anyways, I went ahead and I cut out a whole bunch of quarter inch bar. I have quarter round bar and I have quarter square bar and I'm just going to do a handful of different things. So these are eight and five eighths inches long. So like so many things that doesn't make a bit of difference. We're just going to go ahead and start doing something with these. I'm going to start with four of the round ones to make this basket twist. But to do that you need to hold them together. You can't just, well you could if you got a really proper fitting pair of tongs designed just to hold four pieces of quarter inch round bar together. You could hold that in the tongs, put a tong clamp on there and that would work. You can also baling wire these together if you want to. A couple of pieces of baling wire. We looked at that when we did the draw knife project, baling wire the tool steel to the the billet when we started. You can tack weld these. There's nothing wrong with that. The tack weld is not part of the finished product. It has nothing to do with the basket twist. It's just a way to hold these together so that you can forge weld them successfully. So tack welding is the way I'm, I tend to go with these. It holds them nice and securely. It makes it easy to do. I watched a video on the subject that Mark Asprey had done and he has a very slick way of doing this that eliminates all that and I will probably adopt that but I'm not going to show it because it's his video so if you want to see how Mark Asprey does that with two U-shaped pieces that slide in together like this so that you're not trying to wrestle four bars you just have two bars that kind of interlock I will put a link to his video up here in this left hand corner go watch Mark Asprey's video excellent stuff if you haven't watched his work Mark is a wonderful instructor and an extremely talented blacksmith. I'm going to go weld up the ends of these. I may weld up some, some of these others while I'm at it into some specific designs, but not all of these can be welded before they are twisted. Some of them get twisted first and I'll try to explain all of that when we get to that point. We're going to do these twists in the coal forge. I like the coal forge for the smaller more detailed forge welds because I can get a smaller heat. I don't need to heat up a big mass of material like you end up doing in a gas forge. So I really think a coal forge or coke or charcoal are all good choices for this. You can do it in a gas forge if that's all you have. But for me, I'd rather do it in the coal forge. So I have welded together four pieces of round bar right at the ends, just a little bit of MIG weld just enough to hold it together while I forge weld it. It has no other purpose but a temporary clamp. So baling wire would work, a pair of tongs that holds that very nicely. Unfortunately this pair is close but I think the the sidebars would fall out. But if you've got a pair of tongs that will hold all four and you just don't let go of them while they're in the fire, that would work. So our first task is just to forge weld the ends together. Doesn't need to be anything special, just a quick little weld right on the end so it stays together and then we'll proceed from there. If you're new to forge welding or if you're new to my channel and haven't watched some of my previous videos on forge welding, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch some of those. I explain things like scarf theory, fluxes, what has to happen in the forge, what you do with the fire and I'll cover some of that today but it wouldn't hurt to review some of those earlier videos and I think I have a playlist on that and I'll try to link to that playlist on just forge welding right up here in this corner and you should be able to go back and watch those and that might help answer some of the questions but if it doesn't feel free to ask down there in the comments section now forge welding a little billet like this together is really quite simple it doesn't require special scarfs or preparation. This is a form of a faggot weld, which we've discussed in the past. So that eliminates some of the problems with forge welding, which is the pre proper preparation of the material. There's really nothing you have to do for this to work. 
The other thing you need is a nice clean fire. No clinkers, no ash, nice coked coal if you're using coal. If you're using coke or charcoal, it doesn't, isn't an issue. But if it's a dirty fire, if, if it's got clinker in the bottom, you're not going to have a successful forge weld. It needs to be a relatively deep fire with the material up high in the fire. If you take the material and stick it down here to get to a hot spot, you're just going to burn it up. There's too much oxygen. You need to burn all the oxygen up before it gets to the, the bundle you're welding. So you have a neutral fire at this point. That's your ideal. You have to burn up all that oxygen. And then you have to come up to a nice heat. And we'll take a look at that when we get to that point. I prefer to weld with flux, even though you don't absolutely have to have it. I'm going to use this flux. It's Iron Mountain Forge Welding Flux. I get it from Canaan Sons, but I think other suppliers sell it as well. You could use borax. You can use Easy Weld. You can use anti-borax. There's all sorts of different welding fluxes out there. Any of them will work in this case, and you can probably do it without flux. But this does help clean the scale off the weld. It helps liquefy the surface so that when you weld, you squirt all the scale off with the melt and flux. So I think flux is a, a good idea. You just want to bring it up to a nice orange. You don't need too much flux, just enough to melt down in there. And we'll bring it up to a welding heat. And we're going to turn it regularly to make sure it heats even. As the material heats, I will continue to check it. I try not to pull it all the way out of the fire, just move enough of the coke aside to be able to see the heat and also keep it turning in the fire so that it heats evenly. It's real important that it is hot all the way through so that it welds. Just the surface heat isn't going to get it done. Sorry for the uh, whiny blower. It seems worse on the video than it is in person. We are just about up to heat. You want a, a lemon yellow. White is too hot for mild steel. You don't need sparks. So that's welded. I'm welding in a swedge to help ensure that the pieces stay together. On the anvil, they want the round bars want to slide past each other. Now what I'm doing is I'm preparing a scarf. Again, go back and watch the video on scarfs and scarf welding. And the twist here doesn't require this. The reason I'm doing this is because I have also prepared a scarf on a piece of 3 8 round bar or excuse me 3 8 square bar and I'm going to weld these together to give me a handle and then the basket twist will be a handle for a fire poker or some other tool of that sort and this will make doing this easier I don't have to hold it in tongs after this so we're just going to go ahead and catch this and show you what's called a drop the tongs weld. This is a weld worth rehearsing before you get it to welding heat. I'm going to move some stuff out of my way here. I will bring up both of these out at welding heat. I will set this bar with the scarf facing up on the anvil, holding it in the tongs. I will set the other bar, scarf down on top, drop the tongs, then hammer lightly to get the weld. This is one place I like this Iron Mountain Flux because it seems to leave a grippy surface so these aren't likely to slip. Borax is a more slippery surface and sometimes these will squirt out before the weld is completely done and then you've got to pick it up off the floor and start over again. Another thing I'm going to do is put a mark on the back of the bar on the side that needs to be up when I come out of the fire. That way I can be all ready to go when it comes out of the fire and I don't have to worry about which side is up, which side is down. I'm put a bigger mark on this bar so I can see it better. And it's just a little scribble. It doesn't really mean anything other than turn this side up. Just a little bit of flux. doesn't take very much. 
And then you want to heat these slowly and evenly because this is starting off hot. I'm actually going to move it up a little further in the fire where it's not quite as hot. Try to keep this one down in the, the neutral zone. Get it hot a little bit faster. They both have to be at that bright orange to lemon yellow range simultaneously. As we approach welding heat, we can leave these in the fire and just touch the ends together. And if the ends in the fire want to start to stick, you're probably at welding heat. It's a real good way to tell. You don't want a bright white heat with sparks coming off. If it's sparking, you're ruining your material and you've gone too far. A few sparks aren't going to hurt, but it, that isn't the goal. I don't feel like that is a perfect weld at this point, but it's stuck and that makes life easier for the next pass. Put some more flux on there and back in, take another welding heat. Then we want to refine the, the weld joint. Since we're welding it to a 3 8 square bar, that's what we want this to look like. It's real easy to go too far and end up with a skinny spot. So try to avoid that. Better to leave it a little thick. But that's pretty much all we're going to do there. Now we're going to heat up this in and weld it. Everything is just the same doing this, except I'm going to weld back just a little further, and then I'm going to draw out the end. Bring that to another welding heat to finish that. I'm going to finish this after we put the twist in it. But I'll get all the drawing out done now. For most of it anyways. Then I want to clean up the, the middle and just get it kind of straight again. We can go to the vise. And we can put our twist in it. And just twist it until you think you like kind of what you see, and you could leave it like that. But here's the magic. Let's twist backwards just a little bit, probably less than a full turn. And the basket opens up. Now you can see that that does not open up perfectly even in every case. And sometimes you're going to need to get in here and pry and twist. Some people have special tools just for this. But you can even these out if they don't come out perfectly even. That's usually due to just a little bit of difference in heat. careful straightening this because it would be real easy to just kink and collapse that. And there's not much chance to save it if you screw it up badly at this point. So take your time. I'm going to round up this end. Put a nice little hook on here just to be able to hang whatever this ends up being. 
this is all dependent on how far out you draw this and everything else. And of course this video isn't about much about the finished product as it is just this twist. But something you can hang this on a hook on the wall is kind of a nice touch if it's a fireplace poker or shovel or something like that. But that's pretty much a very simple basket twist. These can have more components you make them out of five or six pieces if you want to. I have seen them done with two baskets, one inside, one outside, and they go in opposite directions. And we'll do that one of these days. But let's move on to our next twist, just so we can see more than one welded twist. And I'm not going to do a basket out of this one, even though it starts similar. This is two square bars on opposite corners and round bars in between. So square bar on what would be your top left and bottom right and on your top right and bottom left are the round bars so they're diagonal to each other and we're just going to forge weld both ends and then we're going to twist it and see what it looks like and this is just like before use the swedge to hold it in place but then I just want a nice square weld on this. I'm not going to do anything special to this one. So I'm going to go back to the face of the anvil. That's all I want to do. I just want to hold these together. Same thing on the other end. Light rapid blows. So the weld is stuck, then you can go a little heavier. Like I say, I don't really want to take this down to a big taper or anything. I'm not going to do anything with this twist later, but We'll leave the bar as square as possible. Now we're going to heat the whole thing up and go to the vise. And this started to twist a little bit while I was welding it, so I'm just going to go with the twist in that direction. And again, just twist it until you feel like it looks right unless you're trying to match something else, in which case then it has to, to match. The scale makes it hard to see this, but let's uh, wire brush it and take a look at it. That's a very interesting twist with the square bar and the round bar wrapping around each other. I rather like that. I think in heavier material that would make a good handle all by itself. Just a real quick look at some of what you might do if you combine forge welding with twisting. It's just a matter of your imagination. You could probably find several dozen different combinations of material. Sometimes you twist the material before you weld it up. Sometimes you twist the material after you weld it up. Sometimes you do both. Sometimes you'll twist it as individual bars, weld it up, and then twist it again. Experiment, try things out. This twist doesn't belong in a project. I'm not doing anything with it. It's just an experiment. And I can hang it on the wall, and I can then remember what I did if I do need it for a project. But in a little bit heavier bar, maybe out of 3 8 squares and rounds, that would make a nice handle for a fireplace poker or shovel. It would be a nice looking twist for a, a picket on an ornamental project if you did this longer or forge welded this into a square bar so you just had this little section of twist right in the middle. Lots of different options if you're comfortable forge welding and you can really expand your repertoire of twists. And we're going to do more of these. I thought I'd do several more today but it took longer to get this one welded up than I really thought it would. I had a few problems that I didn't show but if they don't look too terrible on the the final video. Maybe I'll put them at the end of this video and you can watch a few outtakes. And I would watch Mark Asprey's video on doing a basket twist. He does one with that interlocking round bar so you don't need to weld them beforehand. And he puts a collar on the, the product to create a very different look than what this one is. So it's a whole different approach to the finished product. Involves a little bit more forge welding. Great video. 
but I'm not going to copy his video to show it here, so if you want to see what he's doing, you got to head over to his channel. I mentioned a double basket twist. I first saw that done, Dorothy Stigler did that at the Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference a long time ago, it may be 20 years ago now, I'm not sure when she did it. But she did one where she, she made a basket twist like this, twisted it once, didn't untwist it, then stacked more bars around the outside, forge welded it again, and twisted that as a stack, I believe. I'd have to go watch, see if I can find the video to watch it again. But when the whole thing was done, the outer basket twisted one direction, the inner basket twisted another direction. It was really quite a complicated looking thing. A lot of fiddling to get it straightened. She had Frances Whitaker working as her assistant to help her straighten that out. But make no mistake, Dorothy was definitely in charge at that point and coaching Francis on what she wanted him to do. So it was a fun demonstration to watch. I hope you enjoyed that video. You can give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. But then try to get out to your shop, make something, experiment with twists. Whether they're welded up twists or regular twists, it's just fun to experiment with them. Keep the test pieces that you make. Hang them on the wall in your shop somewhere. Put them in a box. But then you can come back later and look at them and say, oh, I remember that one. That's perfect for the project I'm working on today. And it's a good way to really spark your imagination. Just stack up different things, round bars, square bars, flat bars. See what happens when you twist them. Thanks for stopping by. We'll do this again real soon. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. See you later. just want to clean up these scarves and get everything back in line and break it off.